We're going to go with a 2008 functional level. We also want to go with a 2008 force functional level. But before we can do all of that, we actually have to install Active Directory. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do that. Now remember that we have roles that we can install inside of Active Directory. So I can go in and I can fire off my server manager and I can install the, uh, the Active Directory role. So let me say next. Here's my Active Directory domain services. It's going to say, well, we have to add the .NET features, so on and so on. Now here's the interesting thing. If I go in and I install Active Directory directory services, it's not going to make this a domain controller. It's not going to do it. You still have to go through and use a utility called DC Promo. And this is sort of like what we saw before in 2000 and 2003, good old DC Promo. Now the nice thing about DC Promo is, is it will add the service for me. So we're going to go ahead and cancel this wizard. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to say DC Promo. So I'll just start. DC promo. Fire it off and it's going through and it's going to install the binaries first. That is what happens when you add this as a role. It installs all the binaries but it doesn't necessarily make it a domain controller. Now remember we have to do some planning here. We have to go through and we have to decide what type of environment that we have. You know here, let me bring this up, here in my Active Directory structure, I have the name, zyx.com. But I have to make sure I know what it is that I'm going to call the overall domain. We need to make sure that we've done a little bit of planning. And I'm going to talk about this while that DNS, uh, or while that uh, domain controller is doing the initial binary install. You have to go through and you have to figure out what we're going to call our particular server. That is the DNS name of the domain. Now it could be the same name that you have for your public uh, structure out on the internet. You know, stormwind.com. We're going to have our domain called stormwind.com. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but okay, are you going to put your DNS records for your internal network on the DNS server that's on the outside? Hopefully not. So how are you going to decide what's going to be inside and what's going to be outside? How are you going to make sure that we have the separation from internal information from external information? So okay, well I'll have an internal DNS and I'll have an external DNS. Okay, you know that works out really well. But you also need to make sure that you figure out, okay, how are we going to isolate the two? What a lot of companies will do is they will add an AD to the front of the internal domain, so it's ad.stormwind.com. You know, that way we have a clear separation between what's inside and outside. Then we can also do a delegated subdomain and we're still able to get to the external website and all that other cool stuff. You also need to be familiar is uh, what domain functional level are we going to have. If this domain is going to join an exist, if this domain controller is going to join a domain that already has domain controllers, Okay, cool, but are these older domain controllers? Are these things running something like Windows 2000, 2003? Hopefully you're not running 2000, but eh, maybe you are. Okay, that's going to limit what domain function level we can operate at because the domain function level says if you're running the 2008 domain function level, all domain controllers are running Windows Server 2008. Again, we don't care what the clients are. It's just the servers themselves. All right, so um, it'll also say, are we going to have other DNS servers out there? Are we going to replicate the information to them? Um, how are we going to set up our overall DNS structure? Is this something that we're going to have multiple domains in a forest? Is it a brand new forest? Is it a brand new tree? Questions and answers area. If I add another domain to an existing forest, what would make my domain a brand new tree structure? So if I add my domain, creating a brand new Active Directory domain, and I add it to an existing forest, what would constitute making this a brand new tree? Very, very good. A discontiguous namespace. So if my company was a.com, I added a new domain, I called it b.com, it's a brand new tree. But if it was a.com and I added this, now it's ad.a.com, okay, as long as that a.com was an actual domain, Underneath that, I would be a child domain and we're still part of the same tree because we have 
that contiguous namespace. Let's see. Um, oh, check it out. We now have Active Directory domain services installed. And it says, huh, we have AD and we have DNS service. Um, it is running. We have four services running, six, seven that are stopped. We have our best practice analyzer. What do we have here? Oh, hit the wrong button here. We'll go back to our roles so we can look at our little dialog box. There we go. It says that we are running Active Directory. We are not running Identity Management for Unix. We're not using uh, services for network information service, password synchronization, or administration tools. Interesting. So we've gone in and we've done a DC promo. But then what happens is, is we get this DC promo wizard. And this is where we're going to be starting off over on page 120. So I'll say next. And it says, warning, warning, we have a new secure default for the security settings. Uh, this prevents Windows and non Microsoft SMB clients from using NT type cryptography, NTLM cryptography. So it's just saying if you have older machines, you may need to scale it back a little bit. So are we going to create a brand new forest, existing forest, or are we going to join an existing domain? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to create a brand new domain in a brand new forest. If I was going to join an existing forest, what I would do is I could say I'm going to add a domain controller to an existing domain, which meant my DNS had to be all set up so that I'm able to go in and find that other domain controller. So if I'm joining an existing domain to an ex or a domain controller to an existing domain, my DNS has to be able to find one of those machines that already exists. If I say create a brand new domain, then what's going to happen is is it's going to be the first domain but I have to be able to find the forest root. So again, my DNS structure has to be in place. But we're going to create a brand new domain and a brand new forest. So I'll say next. What is the fully qualified domain name? And I will say uh, DougieB.com. So I'll say next. And it's going to see if that forest is already in use. Doing some NetBIOS uh, investigation, if we would like. And again, your DNS name and your domain name have to support DNS. Now it's going to ask us, OK, what is your forest functional level? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to select 2008R2. 2008R2 is a little bit better than 2008 because it gives us a recycle bin. That means that I can restore deleted objects in Active Directory without having to bring a backup tape. Now, also remember that uh, by default, if I add additional domains, they will also go in and create R2. Here's the gotcha on this. Remember that if I'm creating a brand new domain, it's in an existing forest, my forest function level can be whatever, which is separate from my domain function level. But if I set my forest function level at 2008R2, all the other domains in that domain, or in that forest, have to be able to run 2008R2 uh, domain functional level. Because in order to have the, fu the forest functional level at R2, all of your domains in that forest also have to be in R2. So we'll say next. Checking out our DNS, it says, oh, look, it's already a DNS server. We're going to make it a global catalog server. Notice that we cannot do a read-only domain controller. Why can we not do a read-only domain controller? Because in order to install a read-only domain controller, we already have to have a read-writable domain controller for that domain. Also notice that we don't have the option to not install Global Catalog. Why? I'm the only domain controller in the domain. In fact, I'm the only domain controller in the entire forest. So we have to have at least one Global Catalog server in there so it doesn't give us the option. We already have DNS installed, so we're not going to uninstall it here. And it says, up. Oh, a delegation for this DNS server cannot be created because the parent zone cannot be found or doesn't run Windows DNS. And what it's saying is, is that I do not have the particular systems installed to automatically generate our Active Directory DNS. But that's fine. I'll show you how to fix that. Here's where all of our log files are going to go. So if I wanted to move my Active Directory database over to that new partition, I could do it there, but I'm just going to keep the defaults to keep it easy. 
You have to have your restore mode password. By the way, this is not the same password as your administrator password. This is the Active Directory restore mode password. This is a password that you want to be rather long. You want to write it down. Yes, write it down. And you want to put it in a safe. That way, if you have a severe crash and you have to restore your Active Directory, somebody went in and deleted a bunch of stuff, you're able to use this password to come back in. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my Active Directory restore mode password. And uh, it does have to match the naming conventions for password, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, or symbols. Three of the four have to be in that password. So again, we'll say next. And it says, hey, we're going to set this stuff up. Notice that you can export the settings. So if I want to do unintended installation, unattended, not unintended, unattended installation. Hopefully I'm not installing domain controllers unintendedly. We're going to do an unattended installation if we'd like. I'll say next. And then what it'll do is it'll go through and it will create our Active Directory.